Hey friends, in my last video, I shared if you had ever imagined yourself as a dedicated yogi or a meditator. Now imagine what that could bring to your life to have that level of calm, to have that clarity, to have that ability to shut out all the noise, to shut out all the distractions, to be able to not only hear your intuitive voice, but to be able to trust your intuition fully. Okay, that doesn't mean that all yogis out there, all yoga teachers are these perfect human beings, but we have the tools. We have the ability to find that still point inside. And the more you practice, the more easily you can access that point. Now, I'm at a point in my life after studying yoga for years and years, I mean, we're going on 30 years now, um, where I don't spend hours of my day in meditation. I like to be out there in the real world. I like to be out there doing things. I like to be engaging with you. I like to be teaching. I love all of those things. And, you know, a little part of me carries a bit of guilt about that thinking, oh, I'm, I should be meditating for hours and hours. This is what a yogi does. So I went to a few of my different mentors and um, teachers I, I respect from all different traditions, not just the Kundalini tradition. And I love what they have to say. So, and, th and this is true. I mean, this is something that I know, despite that little voice of guilt inside, you know, the practice isn't about spending hours and hours in yoga and meditation. I mean, you've heard me say that as well before. These practices are meant to serve your life. And, you know, that's, that's the same validation I got from my mentors is that because I have practiced, because I've had this discipline, I've, because I've worked so hard to, you know, to have that disciplined approach to using yoga and meditation in my life as this facilitative tool for life to get better, because I've done that for years and years and years. I can reach those activated states of meditation very quickly. So when I need to dial in, it can happen very quickly. I don't need to spend hours and hours of my day in meditation. I do need to do it consistently. I do need to practice yoga consistently. I do need to meditate consistency, consistently. That's my lifeline. I need that. I know that is my medicine. But just as I found for myself and just as my mentors validate, it's not necessary to be spending hours and hours disengaging from the world and being in that deep state of meditation, which is a beautiful experience, but it's also really beautiful to use these practices to be out in the world more, to be more engaged in your relationships and, you know, and the work that you want to be bringing to the world and your friendships with your children, with all the beautiful, juicy stuff that life has to offer. And, Many people get confused about meditation. They believe that it has something to do with what you experience in that meditative state. They feel that their minds should be quiet and you know, no thought should come flooding in. If you get just one moment of that deep silence, of that just a glimpse of what it's like to touch that silence, that's all it takes for your meditation to be a successful experience. And the more you do it, the more consistent you are with it, the easier that becomes. And then what ends up happening is that those insights that you receive and that, and that beautiful feeling that you experience starts to flood out into your life. So we start to live our lives in a more meditative way or from, um, let me put that a better way, in a way that when we're interacting in our lives, we're acting from our higher consciousness. So say we're out somewhere and somebody's really, really upset me. They've said something and it's just really set me off. The old me would simply, I don't know, maybe lash out, say something sarcastic, um, you know, engage in some sort of argument. But if I'm doing my practice consistently, I can sit in that moment and choose to hear what, where this person's coming from, what's going on with them. Maybe their perspective is just different from mine and I need to learn to honor a different perspective. 
maybe there's something I'd like to share with them about my perspective. Maybe, maybe not. But if I do it in this aggressive way, they're not going to be able to hear me just as I'm not really able to hear them if I'm coming from a reactive place. So, you know, that's just an example of why we do these things. And some of the incredible benefits that come from the practice are that our relationships change and the way we move through the world changes. And also we have this incredible ability to experience a level of fitness that can be very hard to get by doing other things because yeah, you can, you can do weight training, you can jog, you can do all of these things, but there are very few things that you can do for your body that heal your nervous system at the same time that expand your lung capacity and reduce your anxiety and you know there's all those internal benefits but your body gets strong physically strong too and flexible and all of these other juicy benefits that this is the cool thing that you can maintain throughout your lifetime it's not a practice that you're going to have to give up you'll tweak it you'll modify it you might not do as many repetitions of a pose as you once did, but you're still gonna be able to do it forever. So it's a practice that grows and evolves with your changing needs. So I invite you to check out the link here. I'm going to take my students on a deep dive into the transformative practice of Kundalini Yoga in the same way that I did. I didn't begin with um, the self-mastery work that I've been sharing with you in the last few months, I began with a course similar to this 40-day course that I'm sharing with you now, where I went through the foundational aspects of Kundalini, except the Kundalini that I'm offering you is entirely, not entirely different. It, it obviously draws from the tradition of yoga. So there are similarities to other yoga practices or other kundalini practices that you may be aware of because there are foundational elements, but I've put it all together in a very different way. So it's not a dogmatic practice. It doesn't require you to change your religion, wear a certain type of clothing or anything like that. This is a very simple practice that serves your soul. So check it out. Our journey is starting really soon. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit about it so that you can understand how it can work on a more personal level and why, why something like this might be important for you too. Thank you for being here.